impact. Living in a memory. Hey guys, welcome in. Today we have got a really special guest and somebody that I have been jonesing to get on for a long time because I have watched through everything on his YouTube channel. And if you haven't, after today, I guarantee you will. This is Impact. And remember, on Impact Podcast, what we are doing is looking for men who impact their world and make a difference in the world. And this guy, L.A. Marzulli, certainly does. And I am really excited for you guys to hear him today and hear what he has to say, because I promise you, you're not hearing this anywhere else. So, L.A., thank you for coming on Impact and uh, would love to hear just a little bit about you. Tell us who you are, what you do, and how you got to where you are today. Yeah, and, and thanks for having me on, Jeff. It's uh, it's it's an honor and pleasure to be here. It's always good to talk shop, as it were, with another <laughs> believer uh, yeah. you know, using what I call Christianese. It's just you know, mano a mano, let's just, you know, get down and uh, into the trenches, as it were. Um, I'm the author of 13 books and 27 films. Um, we have our own publishing company called Spiral of Life. We, we've we now published two other authors uh, besides myself, uh, Vicki Jo Anderson, her groundbreaking book on sleep paralysis. They only came yes. out. Karen Wilkinson, uh, that book just came out. Stolen Seed, Evil Harvest. She was a lifelong abductee. Um, she had children by them. It's not for the faint of heart. It will take you down some rabbit holes that people uh, don't want to go, but it's real. And it, and it all yeah. everything moves back to Genesis 3.15. Um, <clears throat> I was a professional uh, musician. Uh, I was in numerous incarnations of bands, orchestras, all sorts of stuff like this. Um, I was with a guru for four years, three or four years. My third eye was open. <clears throat> I was completely immersed in the new age, lived in the ashram. Um, I had spirit guides. I mean, I was on the other side of the aisle. I became yeah. a Christian 43 years ago. As the, as the Lord began to move me out of the kingdom of darkness, they followed me and did not want to let me go for obvious reasons. Um <clears throat> Uh, I was on the rock and roll trail forever, uh, professionally. Uh, the bands that we put together, one, one band in particular with with Bob and Norman and myself on keys and 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 lead vocal, uh, we were all over Los Angeles. We were in and out of studios. We had production deals. We had managers. I mean, we got that close. Later on, I'll tell you a quick story. Later on, and I became a worship leader almost immediately after coming of the Lord. So I was a oh, worship wow. leader for like 25 years. All I wanted to do was be a Christian artist. And the Lord kept going, yeah, I know, but that's not what you're here for. Trust me. It's just like, <laughs> bring you over here now. I know you're kicking and screaming all the way, but just drop me. And it just he, didn't work he, out. Oh, yeah, yeah. He began <laughs> to do that um, in the, after about, after, when the church was open from 1980 to 1990, I was pretty much there all the time. Yeah. Um, it was it was Calvary Chapel. It was Bible study. I, I couldn't get enough of it. I read and reread the biblical narrative. But I remember as a brand new Christian reading about Noah, getting to Noah. This is like, you know, maybe two weeks after being born again. And and I get to Noah and and I go, wait a minute, what what is this? Because, I mean, I kind of knew the story, but I had never read the story, you know? Yeah. Going like, well, wait, you know, it's like, why does he... Why does God, you know, destroy the entire earth? I mean, what what did they do? It's so bad. I don't get it. You know, kind of eh, yeah. Bothered by that, right? And a couple of chapters later, it's the Tower of Babel, and I'm going, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are these guys doing? Just building a stupid tower? I mean, I don't understand what's going on here. And then a couple of chapters later, you get to Abraham and the five kings. Now we got this warlike God guy running around killing people. And then when I get to Sodom and Gomorrah, I almost throw the Bible against the wall. And I go, I go, we've got to have two, this is what I'm thinking. We've got to have two gods here. We've got to have the God of the Old Testament 
who's I'm not even sure they're, who this guy is. Said, yeah. Tell me about Jesus, who I totally get. Because I'm reading, you know, Old Testament and New Testament at the same time. Jesus is really cool. Totally get it. I totally get it. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Except when he comes to the passage like, it'll be like the days of Noah when I return. What? You know, it's like, <laughs> what the heck is that about? And this goes on for like 10 years. And, you know, as, as a Christian, I mean, I just kind of accept it because, oh, I don't have any answers, but I guess I'll just accept it. So a friend of mine goes, well, what about life on other planets? Whoa, I had no idea. So I go down yeah. to the Christian bookstore. It's before the internet. This is 88, 89. And by the way, I've reached the end of the internet, just so your listeners know. It's just, really? <laughs> I've reached the end of the internet. No, but I love that commercial. But um, <laughs> so I go to the bookstore and the lady looks at me like I got three heads. So she takes me down the aisle and there is this lonely tome on the shelf. There's maybe three or four copies. The Omega Conspiracy by Dr. I.D.E. Thomas. I mm -hmm. immediately get it. I go home. All of a sudden, all these answers that I have been searching for, he's dealing with. He's dealing with Noah. He's dealing with the Tower of Babel. He's dealing with, with the, the Sodom and Gomorrah deal. He's dealing with the Nephilim uh, on the earth in those days and also afterwards. And he's expounding on it. And I'm just sitting there going, you've got to be kidding me. And so I'm reading his, I'm reading all of his footnotes and liners, and he talks about the Book of Enoch. Now, these are the days before the internet. I have to go out and I have to order the Book of Enoch from yeah. the bookstore. So oh, I can wow. know, drive, yeah, drive over to the Christian bookstore and I can order the Book of Enoch, sir. And it's like, you know, that'll take uh, you know, six months to get here. It was about two weeks, whatever. And yeah, so call you up and you finally get it. And some of the things I would have to go down to the library and order the book from a library and it would come in and then I could only read it in the library. These are yeah. the days before the internet, you know, before you could, before information highway was there. And that book changed my life. I, um, I called Dr. Thomas. Um, I had a lunch with him. The first lunch, there was a character in the book of Enoch called Shemyaza. Mm -hmm. And, and as a student of the occult and of the new age, the moment I got there, I went, I know that name. I know who that is. And I went up to my library, my bookshelf, and pulled off UFO Contact from the Pleiades by Every Billy Meyer. Sure enough, the contact, the contact, the entity from the Pleiades, nonsense. Yeah. That, there's the balloons again. <laughs> this, wait, I'm not doing this. This, that... I was, I, I'm not doing this. This is what happened. <laughs> oh my God. I was on I was on exopolitics yesterday, right? Yeah. And I would say certain things and the balloon would come up. And they're going like, Are you doing that? I'm going, No. Everything I was up. like, wait a minute, what is that? Not again. I have, and I shut my computer. Wait, wait, wait. Back up and say it again. See if it does it. <laughs> what what did I say? I that's what I was like. I got so distracted. I was like, I just lost it. I, I don't know you're what you're talking about. I mean, okay, let, let me let me st let me stop. Let me stop you just for a second. Okay, let's back up. Let's assume because this channel, like I said, a lot of the people on here, we're we're not talking about people that go to church. A lot of them, a lot of you know, it, it, guys that have no interest in God. You know, they're they're doing a whole different deal. What is a nephilim? Okay. It, let, let, let's start at Noah. <clears throat> or, well, you know what? Go back to Genesis 3. Let's start at the Nephilim. Okay? okay. And then who is Noah? Why did God save those eight people? Is that really true? You know, because a lot of people are skeptical. Um, and I know you are not only a filmmaker, but you have led archaeological digs around the world. And, I mean... This is, you know, so so in other words, guys, we're not talking to somebody who's just got book knowledge. We're talking to somebody that has traveled extensively and researched what he's saying. So what what L.A. is talking about is not just, hey, this is what I read or this is what somebody told me. This is from actual research. So let us let's go back to there. Let's assume guys don't know what we're talking about. 
Um, so we're not accused of you guys are just talking Bible stuff or not so much Bible, but Christianese, which I love that, that term, because I just, I teach a men's group and I tell them, you know, we'll, we'll start to talk and some will start teach or talking in Christianese. And I'm like, no, 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 no. We don't do that in here. No, because that, that literally has no meaning. What in the world are you talking about? And and make them explain it in real terms. So let's go back and let's talk about that. So we're at the first Nephilim Mounds Conference uh, in Ohio. Russ Dizdar, uh, Gary Stearman, and myself. Yeah, Uh, Chief Joseph was there. Fritz Zimmerman was there. And Gary gets up at first. Gary Gary Stearman, elder brother. He's he's 85 now. Yeah. Gary gets up and his... um, his talk is entitled it's all about the seed and he begins to lecture from genesis 3 15 and we're all sitting there like this on the edge of our seats because none of us had ever heard this before we yeah. knew about genesis 6 but we didn't link it back at genesis 3 15 genesis 3 15 and, and the book i'm working on now which is called the rungs of ufo disclosure i bring the reader back to this over and over and over and over again it's that important Genesis 3.15, in my opinion, is the key to this book. If yeah. we don't understand the exegesis, the interpretation of Genesis 3.15, we are clueless as to what's going on. And Gary, yep. I'm opening my online Bible here. Okay. Um, and guys, if you're watching this, when you watch this, just just get a Bible, dude. Get a Bible. Don't, don't just listen to what he's saying. Get a Bible. Prove it. You know, I mean... You, if you're skeptical, okay, good. Uh, I, I'm not scared of your skepticism. Neither is he. So yeah, no. when you guys watch this, grab your grab your Bible, grab a Bible, or gra- go to an online source and go to Genesis three fifteen. Man, prove it, right? You know, let's. Yeah, yeah and and so let's go back Genesis three fifteen. I love it, La, because this is when I heard you. T- talking about this numerous occasions i went back and i was just eating just going man this this makes so much sense i never learned this i went to bible college and seminary and and they don't teach it pastor for 20 years and i never looked at it it is it is the key to the biblical narrative they don't teach it gary stearman who pastored a church for i don't know 30 40 years yeah uh, he is steeped in this and so Gary's up there. It's all about the seed. And he opens up with Genesis 3.15. And he gives us the backstory. Adam and Eve have just, just blown it. They've sided with the dragon. They've sided with the serpent. They've taken on his attributes, which is why, you know, it's hit the fan, folks. And yeah. uh, the Lord Jesus appears in the garden, and he says this. I'll read King James first, then I'll go to the Amplified. This is Genesis 3.15. 3.15. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. Uh, he shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. Listen to this. This is the amp- Amplified. And I will put enmity, open hostility, between you and the woman, between your seed, offspring, and her seed, offspring. He shall fatally bruise your head, and you shall only bruise his heel. That's it. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's it. That's the whole Bible. Because it's the seed of the dragon, the offspring of the dragon will be at war with the offspring of the woman, the one coming from the woman. It's the first prophecy of Messiah, is the proto-evangelium, that's Jesus, he crushes the dragon's head. Three chapters later in Genesis 6, the whole thing explodes. Why? Because the dragon knows it's a seed war, and if he can corrupt the image, Doug Hamp, title of Doug Hamp's book, if he can corrupt the image, if he can somehow twist the genome so it's no longer a human as we know it, Messiah can't be born, checkmate, I win. He does yeah. so up to eight people, only eight. And it says later on, but Noah was pure in all his generations. It says it right there. Noah it was pure in all his generations. And then there's a, there's a vetting process. Noah, you, your sons, your sons' wives, you come on the ark. So that's the vetting process by God the Father. To think that, for a moment, that Noah wouldn't know that Ham's wife carried a Nephilim gene. There it is again. See that? See the thumb up? Yeah. What is going on here? What 
and and then we get the balloons. I mean, I've got everything off except for this. That's crazy. And I don't I don't know why it's doing it, but it's you know it's hey you know thumbs up. There it is again. <laughs> you know it, wow. it yes something's up with anyway. I digress. So this the sea war manifests all throughout the biblical narrative. It does. Mm -hmm. And unless a person understands that, when they get to the Tower of Babel and Nimrod becomes Gaborim through ritualistic sex magic, what are we looking at? The Nephilim were on the earth in those days and also afterwards, After. when the sons of God took daughters, took women, women, earthly women, and went into them and had children by them. And it's not taught because, well, angels can't have sex. Who says that? It just says we'll be like the angels neither married or given in marriage. It doesn't say, and remember these entities, there's a word that Russ Dizdar caught me, metiskis modesty in the Greek. They have the ability to shape shift. They can right. appear as men. And we know that Paul tells us some, some of you have changed, you know, entertained angels unaware. So, you know, we see a picture. We see about this much of the picture, but they're here and they do it. The book counter move, um, Cosmic chess match came first. Counter move, how the Nephilim returned after the flood. The book Counter Move gets into all of this. How they returned after the flood. And, and I'll just tell you the backstory real quick. Um, I was reading a book by a really well researched, really good book. And I was I, I, I was reading it and I was very discouraged because I said, you know, Lord, this guy's like an academic, and I'm not. I'm not, I don't consider myself an academic. You know, I'm out of the library. Do I? I'm right. reading a book right now by Gary Wayne called The Genesis Six Conspiracy. It is a deep dive. It's it's probably the most researched book on the Nephilim I've ever read, and I've read most of them. Okay, I yeah. mean it is a deep dive. It's deeper than anything Heiser's written or or Tom Horn or Dr. Thomas. I mean it is, and and Gary Wayne's the author. He's coming out with a sequel, and I'm on oh, the wow. phone with Gary now. Every couple of days, not days, but weeks. Hey, what about this? What about, you know, I'm, I'm picking his brain. It's He's an academic, and it's incredibly well-researched. But uh, I'm, I'm laying down and going to bed. I'm going, you know, Lord, I, I don't know how to rebut that. And so the Holy Spirit begins to speak to me. And it's not an audible voice, but he goes, um, what happened at the end of World War II? And I'm immediately taken aback. And I'm kind of going like, I don't know. I don't know what happened at the end of World War II. Well, what happened to the Japanese Pacific Theater? You know, I don't know. I don't know. What did the Japanese do when they knew they were going to lose the war? Still, I don't like get it. I don't know. Clueless, right? And he goes, what were the kamikaze? I go, okay, divine win, suicide bombers, basically. Right. He goes, yeah. Now he goes, turn to the Book of Enoch. Okay? You know, read that passage. So Semyaza, the lead ringer, the, the ringleader of the 200 Watcher Angels, that come down on Mount Hermon in the days of Jared. And I know it by heart, because I've read it a gazillion times. Samyaza says to the other angels that I fear that you will agree not to do this thing, and I alone will bear the penalty of this great sin. So the children watch your angels sign an oath on Mount Hermon. That stele is now in the British Museum, talking about the angels signing an oath on Mount Hermon to do this deed. Guess what that wow. deed is? According to the book of Enoch, they come right down. They have sex with the women. They completely contaminate the genome. And I'm going like, oh my gosh, it's a suicide mission. And I yeah. run downstairs and I go to my wife. I go, it's a suicide mission. And she looks at me <clears> like <throat> I got two heads. What's a suicide mission? I go, never mind. I'll tell you later. I rush in. I get the phone. And I call Gary Stearman. And I go, you're not going to believe this. It's a suicide mission. We talked for like an hour. And I'm in California. Yeah. It's 10 o'clock. He's back in Oklahoma. It's midnight. And we're going back and forth on this thing for like an hour. <laughs> that book took two years to write. The warfare was insane. Counter move. Mm -hmm. Alvin Nephilim. Yeah. That. What? And okay. Tell me what. Tell tell everybody exactly what a Nephilim is. Okay. Because now we've, we've, we've alluded to it. What is the Nephilim? Where did we, you know, we, we've already kind of gone over it quickly, but tell me what the Nephilim is, how you know, you know, uh, how you know what's going on with it or what went on with it, what went on with it after, and then 
um, how Jude ties into this, because I know you're going to get there eventually. Um, and, and where are we going now? I might be asking too much and I, I definitely want to have you back on. So, uh, get, whatever we can get in at this time, we'll get it. and We'll get, get back to it another time. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm available. So, um, the Nephilim are the unholy progeny, the unholy offspring of the fallen watcher angels yep. and the human earthly women, mingling the seed, Genesis 3.15. Genesis 3.15, there it is. If you don't get it, when you come here, you go, oh, I don't know. It's I guess <clears throat> I guess the the sons of God are the godly line of Seth and the yeah. women are the hoochie mamas of Cain, but that's not what the text says. It's no. B'nai ha Elohim, which is always referring to angels. It's the angelic right. calls. Fallen guys, they're they're having sex with the women. They're producing a hybrid being, Nephilim. That's what the Nephilim are. So, and that was to corrupt humankind, so the Messiah could not and come. Up. And it came down between eight people, eight people. And when it says. Noah was pure in his generations. That's talking about his genetic, his DNA. Not his it's soul. not talking about he was some super righteous dude. No. And there, you know, it, it literally means. And now, of course, we know he was a, a man of God, but he he was pure in his DNA. He was there was no nephilim in there. There was no, no corruption. The no was corruption. Mr. Dehan, um, who I cited in the Cosmic Chess Match and also in other places, Mr. Dehan talks about that. Um, yeah, you know, it, it expounds upon the fact that we're not talking about Noah being some, you know, sinless guy. No, but he 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 was not contaminated, nor were her sons, nor you know the daughters that came on the on the ark. So yeah. it comes down to eight people. Then the earth gets repopulated, and the same mischief begins. But it, it's changed. And, and and what's interesting is, and people go, well, why? Where did Jesus go after he dies? Why does he go to Tartarus? Why does he go there first and proclaim yeah. to the angels who are the fallen angels who are locked mm -hmm. in the gloomy dungeons? He's going, no jailbreak. It's over. I got the keys right here. I got the keys. <laughs> Checkmate. You're not getting out, pal. You know, you're not getting out. That's go not Sunday school talk right there, brother. That's that's school. gang warfare. I it's mean, gang, that's just guerrilla that is that I love that because, you know, I love what you said at the beginning. You know, I, I wasn't so sure about the God of the Bible in the Old Testament. And everybody talks about, oh, I, you know, Jesus, he was just so sweet and so nice and all this other stuff. I'm like, you do realize that the God in the Old Testament is Jesus, right? And if you figure this out, you go find out that Jesus talks about in Luke chapter number 12. He, you know, he literally says, that he didn't come to bring peace on the earth, but a sword. And, you know, and, and he has apocalyptic language there when he talks about that he came to bring fire on the earth and how he wishes it were already kindled. Yeah, no kidding. You know, and now that doesn't sound like sweet little Jesus. You guys want to think he is. That's a God of justice as well. And he said, but I have a baptism to undergo. In other words, he had right, to go right. on the cross, die raise again that was the baptism he was referring to so that you and i could be saved we could actually yeah. get to heaven it's dude we're talking about mind-boggling yeah, you know there's and here's the thing for all you guys that are watching this stuff and you're like wait a minute wait a minute wait whoa 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 whoa, whoa what, <laughs> what the bible's got all that in there yes yeah, it does. you just don't ever hear it because nobody talks about it for goodness sakes People think the Bible's boring. I'm like, dude, are you kidding? <laughs> and, and dude, then, okay, so go yeah, ahead, man. I, I cut yeah, you off, so, but it's so just too good to pass Jeff. up. It's all good, Jeff. So, you know, Jesus, why would Jesus say it'll be like the days of Noah when he returns? Out of the entire Tanakh, the entire Old Testament, because there is no New Testament when Jesus is saying this stuff. You got to remember that. I mean, yeah. you got people writing stuff down, but there's no New Testament. There's just the Tanakh, the old, the Septuagint. Right there it's it's boom it's there so he goes well i'll tell you when i return where are you going he hasn't died yet what are you talking yeah. about? i mean it's like you know what and he's going <laughs> when i return it'll be like a days of noah so it's like ew 
what differentiates the days of Noah. This is why the interpretation of Genesis 2.15, Genesis 6, is critical. Then we get what I call a supernatural clue. In the book of Daniel is, is written a passage which is so pregnant with meaning that it's 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 astounding. So I heard you talking about this already. Yeah, yeah get, bring that, man. That's <laughs> that's that's bad news right there, buddy. It really is bad news. Ugh. So the angel is, is hanging out with Dan, and the angel goes, "Okay, here's the deal. You know, you're going to seal up the words in this book. You can seal the words up in this book, and people aren't going to understand them uh, until the time of the end." Right. Okay. And then he gives us what I call, and I just love this. Every now and then we get a little bone, and this is one of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a supernatural clue. And yeah. again, it goes, men and women will run to and fro over the face of the earth, and knowledge will increase. Daniel's going, What? What do you mean run to and fro over the face of the earth? You know? Yeah. All we're doing are hopping on a goofy horse and going from here to there, and knowledge is basically flatline. Nobody. Yeah. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. Boy, has that changed. So, in some ways. So, that's that's an indication of what the time of the end is going to look like. Seal up these words until the time of the end. Men and women will run to and fro over the face of the earth. Knowledge will increase. We're here. As I'm speaking, men and women, female pilots, male pilots, male yep, passengers, yep. female passengers, everybody's flying all over the earth. I mean, it is. There's thousands of airplanes up in the air, you know, yeah. flying all over the place. That's to and fro over the face of the earth, okay? Yeah. Knowledge increases exponentially. The book is unsealed. Daniel chapter 2, verse 43 says this. Their seed will mingle with the seed of men, but they will not cleave to them. The word cleave, I got this from Jim Williamson's research. The word cleave is the same word that we get in Genesis with a marriage deal between a husband and his wife. A man right. will leave his parents, and when he gets married, he will cleave to his wife. It's the same word. There's no marriage contract like there was in Genesis 6 when they yeah, took yeah. wives. No, 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 no. Their seed is mingling, but there's no marriage contract. Welcome to modernity. Welcome to the breeding program that is going on now, which we've created uh, f film number four deals with the abduction phenomena, the UFO abduction phenomena in our ongoing UFO series. Right now, yep. there's six films in that series, and the abduction phenomena is is. Let me let me ask you something, Ellie. It, it, I've got to get you back on to to do the to to talk about the UFO thing because I'm guessing most people are that are going to be sitting out here because they have no. A, a lot of people don't have a lot of background in church or, or whatever. And they they think that UFOs or you know or whatever is in a UFO is some alien from you know uh, a distant star somewhere a distant planet billions and billions of light years away. What do you believe this UFO phenomenon is? What's in them? What's causing this thing? And I and and just a short thing because I, I got to have you back. I mean. I mean, there, there's so much that, I mean, there, there's just so much here. It's just, you, you could, you could do this like every day for a year easily, you know, it's just nuts. So, so they know what you're talking about because you keep referring to UFOs and I know what you're talking about, but clarify this for them and how this all fits in biblically. And then, you know, because I'm already getting you close to your time. So once we get to that point, um, let's move on and how things are move or how things are going, how everything's starting to tie in. And, and then we'll, we'll crank it back up another time. If, if you're cool with that. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to come back. Absolutely. So um, the whole exopolitics idea, the idea that we're being visited by uh, entities from other worlds. First of all, we don't know what this is. Nobody knows what this is. There are right. people, there are there are people in the scientific community who believe we might be living in some sort of a matrix, some sort of a holographic universe, which explains a lot. Because when these entities show up, both the good guys and the bad guys, the good angels and the bad angels, they manipulate space, time, matter, and energy in ways that totally defy our physics. We don't yeah. know what this is. And we know from scripture that God's going to roll up the heavens like a scroll. 
We know from the book of Revelation, behold, I created a new heaven and a new earth. So, you know, you can debate all that, but right. something's going on here. And no one knows where planet Earth is. I do not believe in the plurality of worlds. I do not believe on life on other planets. The New Jerusalem comes here. It doesn't yes. go to Zeta Reticuli. New Jerusalem comes here. And it's not flying in from Zeta. You know, that thing's 1,500 miles wide. <laughs> Man, I know. Well, it's cubed you know, also, right? I mean, it's like. Well, it, it's, it could be a pyramid. We don't know what it is. I yeah. Mean, pyramid shape but yeah it's, the base is 1500 miles wide 1500 mm -hmm. miles high so you know is it a pyramid or a cube we don't know right um, some people says it's got to be a cube well you don't know that just take a deep breath it could be a pyramid <laughs> you know we don't know don't take a deep high. breath <laughs> deep breath you know just look the christian community hyperventilates <laughs> over anything that that um how do i say this without offending every christian that will watch right. this the it. Christian community, if you say anything that bucks up against the longstanding belief that really, let, let's just say a longstanding belief that they had, whether it's real or not, I mean, people hyperventilate and, and will, <laughs> they go on the attack because it's uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. You know, but. Man, I got to tell you something. I mean, you know, uh, being a bodybuilder for for years and, and you know, <laughs> I tore my lat off the spine and I didn't even know it, right? And and so uh I was getting ready for the uh for the Mr. Universe and um <laughs> and a guy goes, "When did you tear your lat?" And I was like, "What are you talking about? My lat's not torn." He goes, "Yeah, man, it's off your spine. It's over here." I'm like, oh, really? So I'm I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, gone it is. <laughs> you know. And anyway, thankfully I won. But it's just, you know. But I went to the doctor, and the doctor was like, you know, your problem, bodybuilders, guys like you. He goes, you live with pain so long and so much. He said, you uh, don't know when you're hurt. Right. You know. And he said that that's the problem. You know. And Christians. They they live in this one area, this one aspect, and 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 they fought and and they they have certain Bible verses they look at and a lot they ignore, and then once they're challenged with those things like like Genesis and the Nephilim and all of that stuff, I, I know a pastor that's that's really adamant. Those are not that that is that is Cain and you know and I'm like yeah, oh. I, no, I get it. I mean, I totally get it. And I yeah, the thing is, Jeff. Um, I've been banging this drum for decades and all of a sudden, uh, without mentioning any names, because of our archaeological work, um, there was an archaeologist, bonafide archaeologist. I'm not degreed, okay? But yeah. I've worked with archaeologists and I go and I look and I know just enough to get me in a whole lot of trouble. And I have been <laughs> on digs and I, I learned, um, you know, if I don't know something, I, I find an expert or a book and I, I'll do a deep dive. That's, that's right. you know, self-education what you do and this guy was in the front row of the prophecy watchers conference because i did a i did a, a um a presentation on out of place artifacts and i just basically said you know what are these things doing here why are we being lied to all the time when archaeology has no no explanation for these except you know the inca were master stone builders no they weren't stop lying to us so yeah. there is a hidden history that's been deliberately obfuscated for the peoples of the world. The people in church, for the most part, because there's no explanation of Genesis 3.15, um, they don't understand what's going on. So the coming great deception is the idea that we, and this goes back into the Darwinian theory, okay? Darwinism mm -hmm. tells us, which of course I don't believe for a second, but Darwinism right. tells us that over millions or even billions of years, this whole thing evolved very slowly extremely slowly so yeah so let me get this straight you know when we get where how does the reproduction between a man and a woman uh where does where does that come in at some point how does an eye evolve and why would you need an eye and, and this complex system that we that we have no we were created fearfully and wonderfully created and darwin didn't know anything about the dna molecular structure he do nothing about it so the neo-darwinists know about dna 
and they realize that this is an extremely complex coding system that yeah. somebody somewhere invented. This thing just didn't come from some primordial slime someplace. Somebody invented it. And so they yeah. are looking out there, panspermia. They are looking for, and, and when Ben Stein sits down with Richard Dawkins, uh, premier evolutionist of the 20th and 21st century, well, how do you think it began? And he, he sounds like he's quoting Star Wars. Well, maybe in a galaxy far, far away. What? I mean, that's all you, you don't, you don't know. Just be yeah. honest. And tell us that. Aren't you they saying no it's coming off an asteroid or something now too? Oh, I mean, I've heard that. I'm already saying that. That. Yeah. Which, which is, you know, right. So when they show up, this is the coming great deception because when ET, which is not ET, they're fallen angels. When they yes. show up, they will tell us that they created all life on this planet genetically manipulated early man, start of the world's earliest civilization, start of the world's religion. Now at this critical juncture in human history, they are back to usher mankind into a golden age. I heard this 50 years ago when I was in the new age. I heard this 50 years ago. And they mm. were going to take the fundamentalists off the planet because we're not ready for the paradigm shift. Yeah. <laughs> They've already they explained the way the rapture 50 years yeah. ago. Yeah. Before I knew what the rapture was because we're not right. God's wrath, but I digress. So you 50 know, years ago, yeah, 50 years ago in the new age, right. you were already hearing, you didn't know about the rapture. You didn't no. know any of that stuff. No. No, you no. had spirit guides that were telling you that very thing. Not, not spirit guides, but other people in the new age. Okay. That heard from spirit guides. Okay. And that's, that's what we were told, you know, yeah. the Federation of Light and all this other nonsense. It's, yeah. uh, you know, so I've been on both sides of the aisle. So sure. I have sort of a unique perspective of what's, you know, yeah. going on. I here. think Billy Crone was also, wasn't he? Yeah. Crone was in the New Age, too. Yeah. 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 Because he, he I've, I've heard him talk a lot like like uh, like you do as well. It's It's coming down. And right now, the war in the Middle East, all eyes are there. Everything mm -hmm. is focused there. So the congressional hearing about UFOs, where, by the way, number 16, number 17 in the book, right now it stops with David Grush. But before we go to press, there might be one more ladder rung on the ladder. We're going up to full disclosure. We're climbing a ladder to full disclosure. That's the analogy. David Grush stood before Congress. He's under oath. And Representative Mace asks him, uh, did they find any bodies in these crashed UFOs? Right. And Grush leans into the microphone. So he's not, there's no, the body language here is like in your face. And he goes, yes, we found biologics. And she goes, were the biologics human or non-human? He leans into the microphone, looks up at her, non-human. And she sort of giggles and goes, so we found non-human biologics in the in the crashed UFOs. Folks, I'm not making this up. Now, you no. can sweep that under the rug. We actually have, we're going to create what we call the super pastor package for Christmas, where it's got all the UFO videos. It's got all the books. I mean, this is, this is the latest book that just came out. Further evidence right here. And yeah. it, it's got all sorts of, this is, this is, this is journalism. Hey, you know, LA, can, let me ask you something. Talk to the people. Yeah. Let, hey, hold that up for a second, though. Would you? Can you hold that back up? Okay. So this book, as a matter of fact, I, I want to know where I can get all this stuff because I want to get all of it. Uh, if you're putting together a pack, I want to get all of it. Um, but this stuff you're talking about, you know, encounters, um, you know, ha uh, uh, having sex with uh, these quote unquote aliens, having sex with women, um, having babies, some sort of babies. That's all in that congressional hearing. Yeah, it is. This is not conspiracy. We're not making this it, up. No, it's 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 in the hearing. I heard it, and uh, you know, because a lot of people are going to watch this and they're going to go, "Oh, brother." What I'm telling you is. You need to go do your research and get your head out of the sand because what we're talking about here, you're talking about the end times, the end of days, yeah. all of this stuff in the Middle East, all of this stuff going on. 
this is all coming to a head, man. This is all coming to a head. You don't believe in the Nephilim? I challenge you. Get go 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 to LA's YouTube channel. Watch the actual research. Listen to what what they're actually talking about. It's not conspiracy. No, it's not. And that's that's the crazy thing. You know, people people go uh, you know in in LA. To, correct me if I'm wrong. I I truly think Hollywood has desensitized people so much to the point where this isn't spectacular enough for them or they think it's outside the realm of possibility. It's just another scientific or science movie, whatever. But we're actually talking about reality here. Yeah. I mean, this, this is, this is real. When, when it comes down, it will change everything and do it instantaneously. Um, and, and people need to understand that, that it's coming down. The cat's out of the bag. Uh, the fact that, Congress is hearing about retrieved bodies. Well, I've known that for 30 years. I mean, it's yeah. not me. I mean, it, this goes back to the Roswell crash. In fact, number number seven and number eight in the our ongoing UFO film series um, is on the Roswell crash. Number seven, we went up and we interviewed Linda Marcel, Jesse Marcel Jr.'s wife, his best friend, his daughter. And, and part of that film is to exonerate the Marcel name. And to clear mm -hmm. it and, and to say, look, you know, it was not a weather balloon. And Ramey made a fool out of Marcel Sr. when he trotted him out in front of everybody. What's damning is Ramey's holding this telegram in his hand, right? And so Ramey's figures, well, you know, nobody can read the telegram. Well, that's true in 47. But people can read the telegram now because of the computer. And it's, and it's but the telegram says, Retrieve bodies, crash this, right, Pat. It's like right there. It's right there in the telegram. Right wow. there. Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, what do you do with that? And that's the Good. work of David Rudiak. Um, hats off, Mr. Rudiak. So um, it, it was not a weather balloon. It was a cover up that started the decades of cover up until 2017 with Commander David Fravor on Tucker Carlson who stated on the record, whatever this was, was not from this earth. There's a researcher, I use the term very loosely. Um, this guy's been around as long as I have, and he insists that all of this is demonic delusion. I won't refer to him by name. That there really are no nuts and bolts craft. People are not being abducted. He's gaslighting everybody. How do you know yeah. that? When was the last time you were in an operating theater and took out an implant? We did in our Watcher series. We took out an implant from some guy who was taken at five years old and he was implanted, you know, with the late Dr. Roger Lear. We did, our team did that. We've got the footage of the Converg as UFO. We broke the story with Robert Salas, who was the commander of the Maelstrom Air Force Base in, in 19, um, whatever it was, in the 50s, when the UFO, or the, or the 70s rather, the UFO appeared over the gate and shut off nine intercontinental ballistic missiles. We broke that story for crying out loud. Yeah. You know, we were the guys that took the ferry from Jaime Masson and deconstructed it and showed that was a hoax. And recently, Jaime came out with what I believe, and I love Jaime, he's a great guy, but these mummies that you saw, they're yeah. all a construct, in my opinion. They're not real. It, yeah. they're, not, they're not bodies of aliens. But this is what people are remembering. So to your point about Hollywood and being desensitized and predictive, programming that's exactly what's going on so yeah. when mace asked grush you know were these non-human biologics and he says yes whoa what are we waiting for what are we waiting for so yeah where, where do we go from here and 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 i know i've kept you i've kept you an hour so uh, let me wrap this session up this way um with all of that where are we going I mean, where's this going now? It, it, it will go to full-blown disclosure at some point, and that means everything changes. The entire globe, this is how you get the globe to go into the one-world government and the yeah. one-world religious system that we read about in Revelation. This is this is the fulcrum that moves everything. This is it. Yeah. This is it. I 100% I, I, I agree. I mean, I, I really do. I've uh, I, I agree with it. You know, all, there's so much happening so fast. So fast. 
Yeah, it's literally hard to keep up with everything. That's why we bring guys. Well, I, I only know of one L.A. Marzulli, quite honest with you. Gary Steerman, I think, uh, but I don't think he is able to get out and do research like you are anymore. Not anymore, no. But, I mean, there's very few guys like this, and I need guys. I want people to hear stuff you're not even going to hear in church, man, and how the Bible actually talks about this stuff. Yeah. And where we're actually going as as a race of people. Um, and if you've seen what we've talked about today, how, you know, you go, well, wait a minute. I thought, you know, I'm not really sure about the devil. Is he even real? Oh, he's real. And I want to encourage you to get L.A.'s books. I, I want you to go. Where, where do where do people go? to get your books and even uh, get your movies, rent your movies online. Yeah, you can Where do they do this? Online. You can go to lamarzuli.net, lamarzuli.net. Uh, there's a whole store there. There's the Daily Show, all sorts of links, lots of information. If you, if you want instant gratification, you can rent all six of the UFO films by going yeah. to streaming.lamarzuli.net. Streaming. Like like a stream, streaming yeah. to LMarzuli.net, you can avail yourself of all this information. And um uh, we're gonna make, like I said, a pastor. It's not not together yet, but it will be. Uh, spe you know, specifically the pastor package. Uh right. I'll probably construct a letter <clears throat> to the pastor so you can just go Merry Christmas here. And a lot of these guys, you know, um poo-poo it, they won't even look at the information. And yeah. Ignorance and arrogance is a very deadly combination. This thing yeah. is coming down. It's time for pastors to get on board and understand that the hour is very late. Very, very yeah. late. If all of this is happening, and really all of this stuff has been prophesied in the Bible, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. we're reading about all this stuff, and we're seeing this stuff go faster and faster. That is what Jesus talked about I mean that that or excuse me that's that's what I believe Paul talked about the birth pangs right yeah we're in the birth pangs correct yeah we're in the birth pangs and what happens when a woman is uh in going to have a baby well get you know the contractions come and they come faster and faster and faster and harder and harder and harder until that baby is born and that's 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 exactly where we are man that's where we are I, I think we're about to get the birth of the baby <laughs> and uh, so to yeah, speak, Jesus is coming soon, man. I agree. No, he's, it's, yeah, it's maybe sooner than we all think. We'll see. There's just so much to explore, and I, I think this crowd is going to be like, "Well, wait, what?" <laughs> yeah. So, and and look, guys, here we're going to talk about God. We're going to talk about Jesus. We're going to talk about you need to be saved. Okay, you want to get to heaven. You've got to you've got to repent of your sins, man. You got to believe in Jesus, what He did for you on the cross that he died, he shed his blood, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And all you got to do is repent. Call on the name of the Lord, and you shall be saved, right? Amen. That is a non-negotiable. That's a non-negotiable. If you're going to go to heaven, there's not many ways. There's one way. Sorry, the way is narrow. There's only one way. The way is narrow. And we are getting to hear not Sunday school talk, you know, not church Christianese. We getting down where we break it down on everyday life, on everyday level, so that you can find out, dude, the Bible is the Bible's serious, man. Yeah, okay. So that's what we're doing here. Uh LA, I'm gonna put all of your links down below. If you, you can send me, just send me any links or anything, that would be awesome that you want in there. I'll send, I'll put that in the description below. But guys, thank you again for coming into Impact. That's our episode today. Hello? The Impact. Yeah.